Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 33, The Apple. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode The Apple, which aired on October 13th, 1967, and occurred on start date 3715.0. Story synopsis. When Kirk beams down with a large landing party to investigate planet Gamma Triangulae 6, a flower turns towards security guard Hindroff and sprays him with deadly spores. Scott reports that the matter-antimatter pods are inexplicable inexorably losing potency. He believes it has something to do with the planet's unusual magnetic field. Kirk sends Valerie and Marple to scout out the way and detects a to the nearest village. Spock then detects a presence of a humanoid watching them and also detects planet-wide vibrations. Spock finds also finds a curious low-density rock which explodes unexpectedly when he tosses it away. Spock runs in the way of another flower, which is about to spray Kirk, and catches the darts in his own chest. McCoy injects Spock with a Maziform D, but does not respond, and asks, Kirk asks Scotty to beam them all up. The Enterprise's matter-antimatter pods have already been drained by what Scott now identifies as some sort of beam from the planet, and Scotty attempts to beam them up, fails, leaving the landing party stranded. Spock recovers, but the landing party is then surprised by a rapidly moving electrical storm despite the absence of nearby clouds. The ground also begins to smoke. Valerie attempts to report him by communicator, but his communication is jammed. The landing party goes to investigate, but Valerie is tragically killed when he runs over one of the exploding rocks. The humanoid returns, and Kirk has Chekhov and Spock create a diversion while he sneaks up on the watcher. Kirk attacks him, evoking tears. Kirk promises not to hurt him again, and the humanoid tells Kirk that his name is Akuta, the chief of the primitive people he calls the feeders of Val. He appears to be in some sort of communication with Val, since Spock notices antennae emerging from either side of his head. Kirk also asks to be taken to Val, just as Scott reports that the Enterprise is being dragged to the planet by a tractor beam from the planet. Akuta takes Kirk to Val, who appears to be a door into a hill in the shape of a dragon's head. Spock's tricorder shows that the entrance leads into the planet's interior and is surrounded by a force field. When Akuta takes the landing party to meet the rest of the people of Val, Kirk notices a strange lack of children and finds that Val has forbidden love, i.e. sex, providing replacements as they are needed. Sienna introduces herself to Spock and is greatly amused when he tells her his name. McCoy finds that the people are in perfect health without any disease or aging. Kirk and Spock then witness a ceremony in which the people of Val provide it with fuel. Chekhov seduces Martha, and this is observed by two of the people of Val, Makura and his newfound girlfriend, who then proceed to imitate it. This angers Val, who gives Akuta instructions. As Kirk and the landing party are resting, Akuta explains to his people that they must kill the strangers, and gives them instructions on how to bash their heads in using a heavy stick. They then disappear, and Kirk and Spock go to confront Val. Val responds by calling a thunderstorm and striking Spock with a lightning bolt. The people of Val then attack, killing a security card. As usual, the rest of the landing party fends off the attack and gets off unscathed. Val weakens as the feeders are prevented from feeding him, and Kirk has Scott attack Val with the ship's phasers to weaken it further. This drains Val's power reserves and frees the people from his grip. Spock accuses Kirk of giving the people the equivalent of the apple of knowledge and driving them from their own Eden. But Kirk maintains that Spock's resemblance to the devil is much more apparent than his own. So, what's the fun fact from this episode? Well, after reading the script, uh, producer Bob Justman jokingly suggested that they should cast Ray Walston, famous for his portrayal of Uncle Martin in My Favorite Martian, for the role. It took 25 years, but it did occur uh, that Walston did uh, eventually get cast in Star Trek in the role of Boothby in the TNG episode, The First Duty. 
So what are some of the compliance takeaways from this uh, episode? Well, first of all, how do you validate that your policies are being uh, followed? This was really uh, struck me when Kirk uh, allowed what he said was his guard to drop because they found themselves in paradise, and that led to uh, the death of the four red shirts. Um, the, um, uh, Kirk recognized that he had not followed standard landing party protocols and uh, had relaxed somewhat. So recognizing that uh, if things appear safe, you're probably going to relax. Nevertheless, that's why you need robust protocols in place. So um, when the situation does occur, you will know how to respond. Uh, this one uh, episode was particularly uh, damaging on red shirts, and this may be the one where the red shirts got the, uh, where the red shirt phenomenon really became most prominent. Four red shirts died in this episode, and um, every red-shirted male in the landing party died horribly. Hendroff was killed by the plant's poison darts, Kaplan by lightning, Mallory is blown up by an exploding rock, and later Marple is beaten to death by the villagers. So uh, obviously uh, it's going to be high risk throughout the episode, and it really asks the question, or begs the question rather, uh, how are you going to manage high risks? Uh, unfortunately, uh, it became a trope for uh, Star Trek that uh, if you were going to wear a red shirt, you were going to die. So uh, think of Nog in Deep Space Nine and how far down the road that goes. And finally, what's your board of directors' role in your best practices compliance program? Do they actually engage in oversight? Do they engage with your chief compliance officer or do they sit there and listen to facts and figures that really have no meaningful uh, information for them in their oversight role. So as a chief compliance officer, uh, you need to make sure the board is engaged with you. You may need to teach them what their role is, but you need to provide them with the information so that they can actually engage in oversight to protect the company going forward. Hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up the episode, The Doomsday Machine. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 